All right, guys, so we're going to do a video on the appreciation pack with the Blue Stone, and we're going to talk about the cards, uh, all the information about it, all their relevance, and all that information. But um, I know a lot of you just want to know right off the bat which one you should pick. So for all of you who just want the quick answer, it's going to either be Super Vegito or Super Saiyan 3 Gotenks. Those are your two primary picks that you're going to want. Uh, that order is really going to be dependent on what you want in the future. Uh, they are both relevant to their mono teams. Super Vegito, while he doesn't have the attack buff of the new one that's out on the JP side, he's still very relevant due to the amount of damage reduction he does. He, his counterpart does not do as much damage reduction. At the same time, the Technique one, the Technique uh, Super Saiyan 3 Gotenks is super relevant on his mono team as well. On top of that, he fits into a lot of fusion categories if you do, or not fusion, a lot of categories if you don't plan on going for the physical Super Saiyan 3 Gotenks. So those two are the two top primary units. Super Vegito, in terms of overall character, Super Vegito is better than Super Saiyan 3 Gotenks. Um, the next one in my, the next two in the list would be Buhan and Omega. They would be the two next units that you would want to go for. And the last one would be the physical Super Saiyan Legendary Broly. Now, I know a lot of you got upset with my last video I did a couple months back, I think it was like six, seven months ago, where I said Broly was the least favorite one. Well, I'm sorry, I, I apologize if you are angry at that. Broly is a good character when you feed in dupe system because he has the guaranteed second attack, so he's doing double damage for a supreme damage card. Uh, and you, if you fit, feed him full crit, he has the built-in second in the dupe system, uh, so he will be doing a lot of damage. He'll be doing essentially uh, almost as much. He'll probably be getting about 1.5 to 1.8 million damage uh, on certain attacks. Doesn't make him the hardest hitter out of all these guys, but it do he does do decent damage. The problem is he doesn't really fit onto any of his mono teams because there's not that many Super Saiyan, evil villain Super Saiyan. On top of that, his legendary, like most most of these guys, except for Buhan at this point. Most of these guys have replacements in the future, and other than the mono-physical team, the replacement on this is going to be the LR Broly for anything else. With that being said, let's go ahead and jump into the full review, uh, so that way I can explain to you why I think what I think. First one is the Unparalleled Golden Key Super Vegito. His leader ability is uh, not really taking too much into consideration anymore. He is agility type key plus 3, HP attack and defense plus 70%. This is the last time I'm going to be going over all the leader abilities because each of them are their own attribute type version of this. He does immense damage and all allies get an attack buff for one turn of 30%, which is really useful. His passive skill is damage received from normal attacks minus 80% and counters with tremendous power, which is really awesome. Feed a lot of crits into him. If you guys have all of these characters ready, I would say go for dupes, because you're going to want to make sure he gets crits. His link skills are pretty vi uh, viable. Golden Warrior, Super Saiyan, prepared for battle, power bestowed by God, fused fighter, shocking speed, fierce battle. He's part of two categories, Majin Buu Saga and Batara. Batara is not a Dokkan Fest exclusive category, but it is a category, and Majin Buu Saga is a primary category. His max stats are 11,000 for HP, 10,000, close to 11,000 for attack, and 4,200 for defense. We're going to be rounding here with a 12 key multiplier of 150. Uh, the tremendous power multiplier is 300%, um, and he's a pretty damn useful unit. Overall, really good. Um, he's part of this Majin Buu category. Uh, the thing is, um, with the Majin Buu category, is uh, the leader of that category is Super Vegito, so you can't run him with a Super Vegito on the team, unless you're using the base form Vegito. So he's not going to really fit on this team. You know what I'm saying? Like, you can't use him on this team. So this category of him being part of Majin Buu Saga, unless you for some reason want to use this base worm Vegito, there's no real reason for him to be part of this category. Um, I guess you technically could throw him in there because it's key plus 2, HP and defense plus 30%, but that's never going to be viable at that point. You just should run uh, an actual agility team. So he's he, that, that's one to take out of the consideration. He's only really part of one decent category, and that is Potara. Um, this is the Patara Fusion Cat, well, the Patara category doesn't want to load because, you know, stupid computer. Um, this is with Khalifla, or Kefla, I'm sorry. And there's a lot of, there are a couple of Pataras in here. He's going to be a staple unit. If you, well, we don't have the actual physical Super Vegito on our, on, on the global side as of yet, but it will be out at some point. Um, and he's going to be replaced by the physical one if you happen to pull him, but he's still going to be a viable unit if you don't, if you don't ever get him. Uh, so that being said, guys, that is going to be the next category, uh, or th those are the only two categories, and he's only really relevant on Patara, so he's only good for one one actual category, and he's only good for the mono team, for the mono uh, agility team. 
he is also kind of a staple on a uh, hero's team, that is. Uh, him and Vegito Blue link very well together. So he, his two primary teams that you're going to run him on is Mono Agility, um, that's with either Majin Vegeta or with the Super Saiyan 4 Vegeta, um, or the uh, Heroes team. And in the future, technically Patara, but that's a very small category. Uh, it's good to run for fun, but I don't see it being too viable. Uh, next one is going to be the uh, Grim Reaper of Death's Rampage, Super Saiyan 3 Gotenks. He has three super attacks, I'm not going to go over, over like in depth. Uh, immense damage, massively raises attack with immense damage, extreme damage, and greatly lowers defense with the 12 key. Passive skills attack plus 120% when performing a super attack, so he's really freaking powerful. Uh, link skills are Super Saiyan, Fused Fighter, Over and a Flash, uh, Limit Breaking Form, The Innocence, Fierce Battle. He's part of Fusion category, Hybrid Saiyans category, and Majin Buu Saga. So he's part of three Dokken Fest exclusive categories, which is very viable, very, very viable. Um, outside of that, he has decent stats, HP of 9400, attack of 9300, and defense of 4906. With a 12 key multiplier of 140%, they kind of shafted him on that. He's a really good unit. He hits for over 2 million damage with crit on 11 key. And that is just with him as a leader and a Super Saiyan 3 Angel Goku as a secondary leader as your friend. Because I don't have a Super Saiyan 3 Angel Goku. So he's hitting really hard. He's part of three primary categories. On top of that, there's going to be that Super Saiyan 3 category that he's most likely going to be part of and will play, uh, will, and will play a viable role on that if you don't happen to pull the Super Saiyan 3 physical Gotenks. So he's a really good unit. I highly recommend going for him as well. Uh, now this is kind of why I said they're, they're tied, the Super Vegito and the Gotenks. It's because Super Vegito is a better overall unit, but Super Saiyan 3 Gotenks has a lot more play in the future. Uh, just because he is also a staple on a hero's team, just like the Super Saiyan, uh, or the Super Vegito. Um, he is uh, definitely a viable character and um, a staple in his Mono Technique team as well. But he's part of three primary categories that are currently here and will be part of a fourth one in the future. So he doesn't, he, he does a percentage based attack increase, which is 120% with immense damage. This guy is probably, honestly, if you're thinking about towards the future, let's say you have, um, you, you know, Super Vegito, Gotenks, and all the other 70% leaders, I would probably recommend you either getting him to feed into the dupe system or getting him and putting him on hold to feed in for duplicates of the, um, physical go tanks in the future if you happen to pull them. Oh, but okay, now that being said, fusion category, Super Saiyan for Gogeta, he's already out. If you have him, then you already know that he's on this team. He hits very hard. He's a phenomenal unit. There's a lot of units in here. Um, Super Saiyan 3 physical go tanks does replace him in the future, uh, but that's nothing to really worry about as of right now. It's probably going to come out in another month and a half. I'd say probably by uh, January at this point, because I know I did say in the before, but we're not going to go into a, a speculation video here. I did say in one video that January is going to probably start the new meta, but the way it's looking, it's not going to. <laughs> uh, but that's okay. So we have Super Saiyan 4 Gogeta that's currently here uh, as the leader, and that's not that bad. He does really well on that team. The next one is the Hybrid Saiyans team, which I can't wait for. It's not out yet. Um, he's going to be a staple unit there, unless you get the Super Saiyan 3 physical go tanks, and that's going to be replaced by him. Uh, this one's actually, let's just take a look at it. I'll, I'll load that up real quick. And he's part of the Majin Buu Saga, which is another really cool one, which he links very well to Super Vegito, fused characters and all. Um, so this is the actual physical one that I was talking about. He also does 120% on, its, uh, on, the, um, on his passive skill when he does a super attack. But for seven turns, he also gets an additional attack plus 60%. But, a, you know, defense debuff. Kind of stinks with that debuff of the defense, but he's doing 180% damage output, which is insane. Anyway, um, so yeah, that's him. The next one we're going to talk about is the Omega Shenron. He's only part of one category, but let's go ahead and talk about him. Immense damage greatly lowers defense. Passive skill, evil domination, attack plus 80%. All enemies attack minus 30%, which is really cool for debuffing the enemy from hurting you. Uh, he is a staple on his mono team as well with Janemba. He links, I believe it was five link skills with Janemba, uh, which makes him very, very viable. I did a team building guide, which you guys are not going to see today. It's going to be out, I think I have it scheduled for Thursday. Um, it actually works out because Thursday is the day that they're going to be released. So he does link with like five of these link skills with Janemba, which is very, very viable. So you have Janemba and you have him both with the damage reduction on Omega and then the actual damage reduction having a high guard with Janemba on top of dodge. This team will not be getting hurt at all. Link skills are Brutal, Beatdown, Fear and Faith, Big Bad Bosses, Shocking Speed, GT, Shadow Dragons, and Fierce Battle. Again, like I said, at this point in time, he's only part of the Shadow Dragon Saga. And unfortunately, with the Shadow Dragon Saga, the leader of that is the Omega Shenron. 
Um, that's the physical Omega Shenron, so he doesn't fit into the Shadow Dragons at all. I mean, technically he does because you have uh, the Agility Shadow Dragon and the Super Saiyan 3 Goku for Shadow Dragon leaders, but you're not going to really utilize them. Um, unless, you know, you don't have the physical Omega, then I guess you could throw him in there because he'll do really well. Um, this one is key plus two attack and defense plus 50%, with the, um, with the, but this is also an Omega Shenron, so you can't run him on the same team anyway. It's only the Super Saiyan 3 Goku, and that's key plus two HP and attack plus 50%. Now this Super Saiyan 3 Goku isn't bad, don't get me wrong, it's definitely not bad to run him as a leader, uh, if you end up getting him at some point in time, but, you know, it's definitely not optimal. Uh, and I, I'm just gonna go with optimal, I really am. Uh, his max stats are HP of 9520, attack of 8803, and defense of 7011 with a 12 key multiplier of 150%. Uh, overall, he's a really good unit. He's very viable on his mono team. Again, like the other two units that we just went over, the Super Saiyan 3 Gotenks and the Super Vegito, he does get replaced by his physical unit, but he does he can do well on a villain's team. He's not going to be a staple on that team anymore, but he can depending on the type of event you go up against. Uh, so he's good for that. He is good to link on a villain's team with uh, with uh, Sin Shenron, that is, if you don't have the physical Omega Shenron. Um, so he's a good unit, but he lost his luster because of his replacement, and his replacement essentially takes him out um, of, of play with almost every single team except for his mono team. Uh, he has no categories to run in either, so it's not like you're going to really benefit from that uh, unless, you're just, unless you only have the Super Saiyan 3 Goku. Uh, but that's my opinion there. Uh, he's a really good unit, don't get me wrong. If you don't have him, you might want to consider pulling from him, but I, that, that's really up to you. I would put him lower on the list because a couple things. One, not that many people, and it's very, it's very, it's a shame, you know, because I really like Janemba. You don't see a lot of people running the strength Janemba on the JP side as a leader. The only time it really comes out is during the World Tournament, and that has been replaced with the Revival category Frieza leader now because your LR Broly is really what you want to worry about. So, yeah, that's that. Unfortunately, that kind of stinks, but it's the truth. And then that also goes into play with what we're going to talk about now, Legendary Super Saiyan Broly, Eternal Horror. He does supreme damage, and that's why everyone really doesn't like him. His passive skill, No Mercy, attack plus 7,000, flat-out buffs, real horrible, launches an additional super attack when keys 8 or more. That becomes really cool, because especially if he gets crits off, uh, he has a built-in double attack, and then you get one additional double attack in the dupe system, so... He can technically get, and I've had this happen before, three super attacks, all of them crit. Now, I've had that happen, and I think the damage output against type advantage, but it was a Doken Fest, it came out to like about two point something million damage, but that's that's all luck based, you know what I mean? It's literally luck based. Uh, his link skills aren't really that great either. Hard and Grudge, Sane Warrior Race, Super Saiyan, the Sane Lineage, Berserker, Prepared for Battle, and Fierce Battle. Yes, he has good ones, but he's like one of those guys who's a villain trying to be a hero. It's very difficult. Unless you're, like, throwing him on a mass the Saiyan team, um, he's not going to really have that many linking buddies. Uh, plus, LR Broly takes him out of the picture. On top of that, for his mono team, he really doesn't fit that well in it because you have uh, you have Korra, you have Omega, um, you have Sin Shenron, and you have Full Power Frieza. That doesn't really leave room for Broly. Then you have your support um, on, on, that are on floaters. So he really loses his luster there because he doesn't really have anyone. The only other one that he really has is the Dokkan variant of Broly, who goes to a Super Saiyan. On top of that, uh, at some point in the future, he's going to go to Super Saiyan 3. That's the free one you get from the actual Broly event, the one that the beta male drops, then he Dokkan awakens the Super Saiyan. He Dokkan awakens again the Super Saiyan 3. At that point, this one could be viable on a mono-physical team again, because he now has a, an extreme linking buddy for it. But honestly, if you have Sin and Omega and then full power freeze and Korra, you're not going to run him. But um, he's not a horrible unit, don't get me wrong, but of the five, he is the worst, all right? So his max stats, HP of 10, 350, attack of 9,500, and defense of 3,300. He has 12 key multiplier of 150%. Uh, he's not part of any category, so that kind of stinks. Uh, can't really do anything about that. Uh, so, again, replaced on the villain's team, replaced on almost every single thing that he is part of, except for maybe one scenario in the future if you want to run the Super Saiyan 3 Broly and him on that team. Um, outside of that, not too much. This guy over here, the next one is going to be Countdown to Despair, Majibu, Ultimate, Gohan, Absorb. He has a lot of super attacks. <laughs> super Kamehameha at super attack level 1, Vice Shout at super attack level 5, and Super Ghost Kam uh, Kamikaze attack or Kamehameha attack at 30% chance at super attack level 10. Um, so he's always going to be doing Vice Shout and he has a 30% chance to do Super Ghost Kamikaze attack as you are all probably aware. Immense damage, immense damage, and then if he gets the Super Ghost Kamikaze Kamehameha, greatly raises his attack and immense damage and greatly lowers attack and defense. Uh, this guy also, I always skip this one <laughs> whenever I do a review. Uh, his Vice Shout 
just basically lowers attack and defense. There's no greatly, it just lowers it. Um, his passive skill, Winning, is everything. This is actually a very viable link skill even to this day. For every key uh, sphere obtained, attack plus 12% and recover 3,000 uh, 3, HP. It definitely helps out when you're uh, when you're lacking uh, lacking health or lacking health items. He can become very viable. He helps sustainability, especially in like the boss rush type of stages. Oh, not boss rush. Um, the Dokkan battle stages where you're going... Yeah, actually it is boss rush. Uh, his link skills are Big Bad Bosses, Metamorphosis, Shocking Speed, Fierce Battle, Wall Standing Tall, Majin, and Kamehameha. He's part of the Majin Buu Saga category. His max stats are 10,000 HP, attack of 9,100, close to 92, and defense of 4,000. 12 key multiplier of 140%. Overall, he doesn't have a replacement at all at this time, um, so he, that, that definitely works to his advantage. We don't know if he's going to get one in the future. He is a staple on his mono team with the Kid Buu. Uh, the only thing that stinks about that is the Kid Buu team. While I love that team, because I do have Kid Buu, and I did not realize how awesome they were until I started playing, um, the Kid Buu team, not that many people run Kid Buu as a leader, unfortunately, and that's another thing you're going to run into. You're going to need to actively search for friends. And I do recommend going out and proactively searching for those friends if you're looking to run, like, Janemba um, or Kid Buu or any other 120 leader that's currently out that's not as popular. They are good units and have good teams. Kid Buu especially, if you have the Intelligence, Janemba, Kid Buu, Buhan, um, and then there's one other one that who links... Oh, no, the, actually, the Kid Buu, the friend Kid Buu links well with Janemba as well. And then you have your floaters. Me, personally, I have an optimal team for that, actually, so it works out for me. Uh, but he's a very good unit. He fit This Majin Buu category team um, is really cool. Unfortunately, it's mostly Super Saiyan, so you're going to really want to run a Super Saiyan on this category. He does go on there with the Kid Buu, and actually a whole bunch of other, obviously all the Majin Buus are on this. Um, but this team, you're probably going to focus yourself around mostly Super Saiyans, because a lot of the newer units, like the Super Saiyan 3 Gotenks, the physical, obviously the leader of this category, um, is here, who is Majin Buu uh, category saga. Um, Majin Vegeta, the, the actual agility one, if you happen to have him. Like, th there's just so many good units here, and they're all Super Saiyans, even the um, category for uh, Unlimited Power Ultimate Gohan. There's just so many really good units here. The chances of you actually running Buhan on this team are very slim. You could do it, don't get me wrong. You could make this entire team based off of uh, off of Majin Buu's, just if you like, if you because you like the character for fun. Uh, but it's not going to be optimal because you're going to probably want to focus it around the Super Vegito because you're probably going to want him on your primary rotation. So take that into consideration when you're making your choice as well. So now that we talked about that, um, obviously, again, one more time, the the, the Broly is going to be in last place. I forgot to throw him in last. Uh, but he's going to be the last place. The Majin Buu, or the, the Buhan, and the Omega are, they're good units. They're both staples on their mono teams. Again, they both, well, Majin Buu, the, the Buu is not on any category. So that kind of stinks. He's good on, or well, Ultimate Gohan Absorb Buu. Uh, he's good on his mono team. He's decent in certain boss rush scenarios for viability on a villain's team. Because he helps keep health regenerating. Uh, Omega is also really good on that, but he's replaced by his physical counterpart. That's why they're lower on the tier list. You, uh, oh, the other thing I wanted to say, another reason why the Omega Shenron and the Buhan are both lower on the list, in my opinion, completely slipped my mind until just now. The Omega Shenron, if you get the physical one, this guy, and let's say you have this guy maxed out, let's say, because my, my situation, my situation, I have all five of these guys already fully maxed out, super attack 10 of each and every one. All four dupe panels unlocked every single one of them. I might get the stone just to get a dupe of one of the cards for the future, so that way I can go and feed them in to save an Elder Kai, right? So, what's going on with Omega Shenron? There's the agility Omega Shenron, who, who Z away or Doken awakens from Sin Shenron to Omega Shenron, who will feed into Omega Shenron for a super attack up. Buon doesn't have a character right now that feeds into him. Broly doesn't have a character that, feed, that he feeds into, I mean, sorry, he feeds into. Buhan doesn't feed into anyone. Um, Broly technically does into LR Broly, but it's a 50% chance, and he is farmable at his base form because you farm him up to Super Attack 10. I mean, are you really going to go and get this guy just to dope and awaken him and get a 50% chance of raising LR Broly Super Attack up when he does a flat-out attack buff? No, you're not. So, again, that's why Broly's last, that's why these, the, the Majin Buu, um, well, Omega Shenron and this, uh, uh Majin Buu, Ultimate Gohan Absorbed are coming in after that. And the top two are going to be uh, Super Vegito and Gotenks. Um, now this is really where it's hard. Vegito as a unit himself is very good, very viable. Uh, but Gotenks has a lot more viability in the future. 
three categories he's currently on. He will be on a fourth one in the future. He does get replaced by his other physical counterpart, but this one can feed into that counterpart, and there's no farmable Super Saiyan 3 Gotenks. That also goes for the Super Vegito. So let's say it comes down to you have all of them and you have everything you want to, right? That you need for everyone else that I've gone over in this in this uh, video. It's going to come down to, do you want to buy the stone uh, to increase the super attack of one of these two? And honestly, you could do that if you want to. Uh, Gotenks just has the most viability. So again, choose one of these two or it's going to be your primary choice. Uh, if you have these two and you want to go for these guys because you don't have them and you don't care about the future... Um, Omega Shenron and Buhan are both very viable units. They're both very good units. I, it's a very tough decision to make between the two of them. Buhan, for the longest time, held the title as being just as good as Super Vegito. Uh, not in terms of damage reduction and damage output, just in terms of viability. He lost that luster just because of the 120 leads that are out. You don't really need to worry about self-healing. And that 3000 HP recovery isn't as viable as it used to be so he lost that luster there. But these guys are pretty much tied, and they both fit very well on each other's teams. Um, I would have to give the third place to Boo, just because um, he doesn't have a replacement at this time. So the actual Omega Shenron will be replaced. And Omega Shenron can be re replaced by his counterpart, so Boo Hun gets the, the edge on him just because of that. And then, obviously, again, last place is going to be Broly. So, that's my opinion on it, guys. Um, I, if you have, like, you, everyone's going to have their own unique situations. I'm not going to go over, over every single individual one. Um, but I'm going to say, if you have, like, the, the top three of these guys, Vegito, uh, Super Saiyan 3 Gotenks, and um, Buhan, you might not want to get Omega unless you really like running Janemba. Uh, the Mono Extreme Team for strength units is very, very unique, and you're going to see that when that video on Thursday gets released for team building for Janemba, there's literally very, very specific units that need to be part of that team, and Omega is one of them. So, for that specific team, you want him. Outside of that, guys, um, I don't know what else to really tell you about this. Top two, again, are going to be these two. I feel like they're tied. Honestly, personally, my opinion on the matter, uh, if you don't plan on going for the Super Vegito or the Super Saiyan 3 Gotenks physical one, the Gotenks might have the actual edge on Vegito just because he will be viable in the future with those categories. But sorry, I know I'm repeating myself a lot. Um, I apologize about that. But thank you for joining me here today. Make sure to subscribe if you're new. Let me know what your opinion is down in the comments below. I would love to hear it to see if you think the same way I do or if you still think that Vegito has the edge over him just because of how much, how awesome he actually is as a unit. But anyway, guys, thank you for joining me here today. I'll catch you down in the comments below. Peace.